Welcome my dear children this is Smita your social science teacher hope you all are doing well at home amidst this covid crisis it's now time to go back to our studies through a new learning experience so let us start with the very first chapter in history tracing changes through a thousand of years well before we begin with let's have a look at what we have learned in class 6 history In class 6 we mainly focused on ancient history of India which started from paleolithic age to around 700 AD here the whole volume for the class 7 would focus on medieval history of India medieval history deals with 8th to 18th century CE or we can say 700 to 1700 AD as the name of the chapter suggests we are going to talk about variety of changes that took place in the thousand years of indian medieval history in this session we will talk about three main changes what are the three main changes the first change is regarding the use of maps the second change is regarding the meaning of various terms and the third change is regarding the historians and their sources So before moving on to the first change we have to know three new words. The first one is cartography, the second is cartographer and the third one is about Muhammad Ali Desi. So what is meant by cartography and cartographer? The art of map making is known as cartography and the person who makes map known as cartographer. See here you can see a video clipping about Muhammad Al Idrisi Muhammad Al Idrisi Al Idrisi was born in 1100 AD in Sata north of Morocco Seta still celebrates its famous son with a statue at the center of the city. El Idrisi is best known for creating the most accurate world map in medieval times. Geographers around the world used it for centuries. was included in his most famous book Nusrat al-Mushtaq In Europe it's known as the book of Roger Let's have a look at change number 1 So you came to know that one of the most famous maps were designed by Muhammad Ali Idrisi You can see a map designed by Ali Idrisi here you can also refer your textbook Look at the third point given here. In this map, South India is where we would expect to find North India. What is that? Do you find anything interesting? Yes, these maps were upside down. That means Sri Lanka at the top and India at the bottom. But after Ali Idrisi, a French geographer came in seventeen twenties. that means 600 years after the map first this map is more familiar to us you can see it is just like our present map of india india at the top and sri lanka at the bottom you can also find the definition of cartographer given in the last line now let us discuss the second change We saw that the second change was related to terminology or terms. So take one term, Hindustan, for example. Today we understand it as India, the modern nation state. But if you want to explain India, there were different terms used by different people during different times. Let us check the differentiation. See One famous Persian chronicler Minhaj I Siraj he used the term Hindustan 
as the area of Punjab to Haryana and the lands between Ganga and Yamuna. And he used the term in political sense for the lands that were under Delhi Sultanate. So this is the image of Minhaj I. Siraj, the great Persian chronicler. And another differentiation was given by Baba. Who was Baba? The founder of Mughal Emperor. And in a similar way, another differentiation was given by Amir Khusru and he was a poet. We can see the differentiation again here. Have a look at it. Baba described the geography, the fauna and the culture of inhabitants of the subcontinent. And Amir Khusru also used the term Hind in a similar way. But now we use the term Hindustan as the modern nation state. So let us take another example, foreigner. We know who is a foreigner now. Someone who is not an Indian is a foreigner. But in the past, a stranger who was not a part of a society or culture was considered as a foreigner. Say for example, a person from Ernagulam, if he went to Kannur, is considered as a foreigner in the past. So that is the difference. Now let's move on to the third change. What was it? It was about the historians and their sources. See, earlier the sources used by the historians were archaeological evidences. Later on, with the invention of paper, lots of literary evidences became common. So what are the archaeological evidences? Coins, inscri inscriptions, architecture and paintings. And when moving on to literary evidences, they are letters, teachings of saints, manuscripts, petitions and judicial records, holy text, chronicles of rulers. That means textual records increased in the period. But why? I told you earlier, through this period, paper became cheaper and was available more widely. And then there is another question came. How it was circulated? Because there were no printing press at that time. Here comes the answer, manuscripts. Then what are manuscripts? Manuscripts are documents written by hand. And you can see some images of manuscripts. The manuscripts were collected by wealthy people, rulers, monasteries and temples. But it were placed in libraries as well as archives. That means these records, these manuscripts were placed in libraries or in archives. Here in India also, there is one national archives. Then who copied these manuscripts? The scribes copied manuscripts by hand. Who are scribes? Excellent copywriters who copied manuscripts by hand and I know many of you are very good scribes see as scribes copied manuscripts they also introduced small changes this small changes grew sub subsequently on further copying some texts become substantially different from one another just like when you copy your friend's notebook when writing you made a small mistake you gave it to another friend that friend also made another mistake. So likewise, the last copy or the last notebook will entirely different from the first one. So these are the difficulties historians faced in using manuscripts. The original manuscripts are rarely found. So that was the problem. 
but there is another interesting fact here the 14th century chronicler siyauddin barani wrote his chronicle first in 1356 and wrote another version 2 years later both the versions were different from each other the historians were not aware of the existence of the earlier version till the 1960s here you can see ziauddin barani so that is all for today's session so let us remember what are the points we discussed in the session medieval period 8 to 18 century the changes happened in cartography and old and new terminologies old and new historical sources then we discussed the value of paper about manuscripts archives scribes and chronicler we will continue the chapter in the next session so till then go through the chapter read it very well try to find out questions from the chapter so that's all for today goodbye and thank you